Now, I got a little worked up in the last segment. But if you think I got worked up, you should get a little Jim Cornette. Now, a lot of you guys might remember Jim. Uh, he was a wrestler, a wrestling manager, a wrestling announcer. Uh, he's just done about anything you could possibly do in wrestling. Jim has done it. Uh, and turns out he's a fire-breathing progressive. How do you like them apples? <laughs> uh, Jim, welcome to the Young Turks. Well, Jake, thank you very much. And I tell you, I, you know, I, your lovely producer told me that you agreed with some of my opinions, and I love to talk to people who agree with me. All right. Well, it appears that uh, we've uh, got the right people then. Okay. So, uh, Jim, um, first, talk to me a little bit about your wrestling career. Um, you know, you've been part of everything, World Championship Wrestling. You did. You invented Smoky Mountain Wrestling, if I'm not mistaken, WWF, WWE, etc. cetera. Uh, how did you get into wrestling, and, and uh, how did this whole career path uh, develop for you? Well, it actually it developed when I was a teenager. Uh, my hometown of Louisville, Kentucky here, I started going to the wrestling matches when I was a, uh, just a kid and started doing photography, and I was around so long enough, then I kind of just got involved in it, and it, it's given me somewhat of a platform. I've been on every national wrestling television program uh, in this country for the last 20 years at one time or another, so at least uh, I have some type of platform with folks who have seen me in wrestling to say something, and it started out really just because I was doing a uh, 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 one of my internet broadcasts, and I just got fed up with what I was hearing, and a lot of people responded to it, and you know, my qualifications to comment on politics are I'm an American citizen. I mean, that's it. I have no experience in or expert knowledge of politics, but I'm an expert in one thing that it seems like the Republicans and the conservatives of the right wing does every day. I'm an expert in hyperbole, hyping up the big fight. I mean, that's wrestling. That's boxing. That's now the UFC. This is what these people are doing to us. Is, is they're, they're hyping up the big fight, the personal issues, the grudges, the glorious triumphs of the American way, the Rocky movies. And a lot of times when you do that, you lie to people. You gin up controversy. You make people mad. You make people want to buy tickets to see the guy whose record isn't really as good as you say it is. And you, you obscure the facts and create a dragon to slay. I know it when I see it. And this is what these people, to me, are doing. And it's ridiculous, especially at this point with all these things going wrong. Now, I know another wrestler who was just a citizen before he became a mayor and then a governor. His name was Jesse Ventura. <laughs> Uh, so uh, he he had the same qualifications you do, Jim. But you know, I think it'll. Well, he was a, he was a Navy SEAL also. Jesse had a heavy resume now. Now that's true. That's true. And we've had uh, Jesse Ventura on the show, and he's got he's got strong opinions too. It must be something about wrestling. But uh, you know, so that brings me to my next question, which is: I think a lot of Americans have this view of wrestlers as you know. Um, you know, I think they view them, I might be wrong about this, but as Republicans, because there's violence involved, and it's just like you said, there's a lot of braggadocio and inspiring storylines and fear and hatred, and then there's the stereotypes, you know, rednecks and rednecks are conservative, etc. Um, if one, are you an outlier, or do people have, or is that stereotype totally wrong? Well, you know, it, 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 it's, it's completely right and completely wrong at the same time because you have both. You, you have the conservative Republicans and then the, the, the right-wing element, and also you have guys who are just a little bit, especially the younger generation in wrestling, just a little bit more tolerant of everything in general and, you know, really not so uh, predisposed to not want to try something different, especially when things are, you know, are going down the drain. So really there's both just like anywhere else, but... At least I think in wrestling, uh, we're a little bit smarter to some of the things that they try to pull. I mean, a lot of people in, in wrestling were still in support of Sarah Palin, people I would find otherwise sane and rational and reasonable individuals. But a lot of people know this is a publicity stunt. They're trying to get this woman over because they, they want to lose, they want to win the election more than they want to do what's right for the country, and they want to put this woman, for no apparent good reason, a heartbeat away from the presidency with a 72-year-old president. And nobody's explained that to me yet, except it was a publicity stunt for people that that kind of thing would appeal to. That's the kind of thing that would appeal to them. So, <laughs> Jim, uh, what, you know, people might ask, what's your beef with Sarah Palin? What's wrong with her? It's just, it, I, it, it's all part of what I've seen over the past couple of years of a, a lack of wanting to change to the point where 
you would put someone like that in, in, in danger of becoming president. She obviously wasn't qualified. Of all the people in the world, this is what we could do. They're, they actually gave us that with a straight face. And, and I, I think it's dangerous for the country. And, and they, they undermine the president in time of crisis. We're at war. We've got an economic crisis going on, or had one. It's up 3,000 points to the Dow since uh, Obama took office. Do you think, uh, you think the Republicans are responsible for the economic crisis? I, I, I think the last administration and just the policies of not keeping an eye on these people had a lot to do with it. And I, I, I don't understand why that they have tried to undermine the guy that wants to make a change after he's been elected. Uh, they come up with socialism, communism, Nazi policies, pull the plug on grandma death panel. Uh, scary, threatening words. They lie about things or at least misrepresent. Nobody will calm down. When did it become acceptable or cool or patriotic to bring a pistol or an assault rifle to a speech by the President of the United States? Yeah, well, that's that's what we've been talking about a lot on this show, and I, and I don't understand that at all. There, there are so many things going on that I, that I think that the conservatives or the Republicans or uh, Wall Street or whoever the case uh, either doesn't condemn and use the word nuts in a sentence when describing the guy with the assault rifle. They don't do that. It's either tacit approval or tacit encouragement to, uh, for everybody to freak out and, and think that the, the, the grandma is going to be killed by the government. Now, Jim, what are they, what are they trying not to, for us to find out and figure out and move forward with? Jim, do you think it's ridiculous. Do you think the Republicans are taking advantage of some of the, their conservative followers and using them as dupes? Because the reality is that the Republican Party is in bed with all those corporations and Wall Street and the bankers, et cetera, that they stoke up their, their audience, if you will, uh, to say, oh, no, no, those are the bad guys, while they're secretly taking money from all those guys. Well, why is it that the, uh, <laughs> the Republicans, the elected politicians, the major uh, Republicans in the party, the major conservatives are generally older, white, and rich, but the people carrying the nutty signs and, and, and carrying the guns and jumping up and down about Nazism are generally middle-aged, low-income, and could benefit from the things that they're trying to stop. <laughs> I can't figure out how they can do that to an entire segment of the populace that would probably benefit more than normal from the policies that this guy's trying to implement. I actually but they feel do it. I, I feel sorry for them, but I think you're right. Uh, I think they use the showmanship that you know that we see in wrestling sometimes, and and some of the other arenas uh, to trick the uh, people into following them. And, you know, look, uh, Rowdy Rowdy Piper always comes to mind uh, because the Republicans will hit you with a chair in the back of the head, <laughs> and then when you turn around to hit them, they'll do. What, I don't know, remember what uh, Piper used to do. He like beg and be like, No, 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 don't hit me, don't hit oh, me. Please, what did I, I do? Didn't do anything to deserve this. <laughs> right. They do well, that. you know, the, the thing is, I mean, some people in this country are just literally that mad the black guy won, right? You're, you're not going to get to them. But, uh, you know, I, I listen to conservative talk radio when I make long drives because it keeps me awake because I get mad. Uh, and it, it, Rush Limbaugh, Bill O'Reilly, I recognize what they're doing. They're playing good or bad guy wrestler, depending on your, your outlook. But Limbaugh, O'Reilly, Hannity, Beck, or that Michael Levine, some of them go completely over the top. The, a lot of them are too smart to believe what they're saying. They're doing it for fame or career, or money or ego. But the people that listen, a lot of them don't know better, don't have the time to research it, um, possibly are not as, as uh, steeped in politics as someone who's a junkie of conservative radio and, and liberal news television like I am. But uh, it, it, the point is they're doing it for uh, literally no reason otherwise than to get themselves over or scare people. And it just doesn't need to be this 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 over the top. Uh, and that is, some people badly don't want us to take a close look at something for the facts, and that makes me not trust them. <laughs> yeah, and and I think you nailed it when you said it's like a show. They're putting on a show, and you know <clears throat> it, they might to us they look like the heels, right? But uh, yeah, well, you know the thing to remember is this is still America, even with Obama, the president, people. The death panels, the abortion factory, or the, the uh, they couldn't get something like that biased legitimately on any level without it being universally reported as a fact and bulletins. They they can't hide what they're doing in, in Iraq that's against the law there that the Bush administration did, much less lie what's going to be happening in Syracuse. It's just scare tactics. It's fear-mongering. People are working you for their own gain. So you calm down, take a look at things. Might be a good idea to listen to the rational-sounding folks offering to help you instead of the hotheads screaming about death panels. 
That's uh, <laughs> words to live by. I like it, Jim. So finally, tell us what you're up to these days. Uh, well, I'm I'm a producer for TNA Wrestling on Spike Television, uh, which is the the only competition in the United States today to Vince McMahon's WWE, and we're doing quite well. And I've got a website, JimCornette.com, where I post a lot about wrestling, but then sometimes about politics, and that's where all this got started. All right, sounds great. Uh, everybody, check it out, JimCornette.com. Jim, thanks so much for joining us on the Young Crooks. Really appreciate it. Jim, thank you for asking me. All right.